Tonight at 6 o'clock, new details about the deputy-involved shooting that left one man dead in Marion County. Hear from the sheriff straight ahead. Plus, the governor's race is heating up. The latest developments coming up. And it's This evening, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side. With WDAM 7 News at 6. We have new details tonight on a deputy involved shooting in Marion County Tuesday that left one man dead. He's been identified as 68 year old Lonnie Hinden. The Marion County Sheriff Berkeley Hall is talking to us tonight about that incident that involved two of his deputies and he tells our Charles Harrington that he's confident his deputies followed all the proper procedures. Marion County Sheriff Berkeley Hall says two of his deputies went to the home of 68 year old Lonnie Hendon Tuesday afternoon to take him into custody. They had several warrants for his arrest. There have been three warrants issued for Mr. Hendon, uh, two counts of uh, child molestation and one count of sexual battery. Uh, and that's what they had went there to serve on him. Hendon was not home when deputies first arrived, but Hall says while they were there, Hendon drove up into his yard in this Toyota sedan. That's when the situation escalated. They told him what they were there for and told him they had a warrant for, for his arrest. And he asked them, I believe, you know, what for or whatever, and they said, look, you know, would you step out? You're under arrest. You want to go with us, and, and you know, and... Uh, at that time, you know, he told him that he was not going and uh, he brandished a weapon at my deputies and of course my deputies took action and uh, Mr. Hendon was fatally wounded in the altercation. Hall says it was a handgun that Hendon allegedly pointed at his deputies. He doesn't know if both deputies fired at Hendon and doesn't think Hendon returned fire. Neither deputy was injured. Both are currently on temporary administrative leave with pay. Both deputies were wearing body cameras. Hall says the footage they recorded and other evidence has been turned over to the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation. There's a full-fledged investigation being conducted by MBI and they'll, they'll have the final say so uh, whether my deputies are right or wrong. When the investigation is complete, MBI will turn over results to the Attorney General's office. Charles Harrington, WDAM7 on your side. Now, Charles went back to Hendon's home today for reaction, and some people who were there identified themselves as relatives. Yeah, they said they did not want to comment at this time. Well, in other news tonight, new video into our newsroom in the past hour shows a vehicle fire at a Circle K gas pump in Hattiesburg. Look at the flames here. This is on US 11 near Interstate 59. You can see the backup there on the road and the flames coming from that part of the gas station. Crews evacuated the area and contained those flames. They're working to put that fire out. No one was hurt, but there has been some damage reported to that building there. All right, now let's toss things over to our first alert weather team tonight. All right, Patrick, we wish days like this could last all spring and summer long in South Mississippi, but that cannot happen. In fact, you're already looking ahead to what June could bring. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just can't stay that way. I wish it could, uh, but unfortunately, that's not how this works. I always have my wife always says the same thing, Carrie, so you're 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 in good company there, but I always have to tell her if you want it to stay that way, we got to move to Canada. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, a little bit of moving, but I mean, it could work. 75 was our high today, uh, which puts us uh, well below average for this time of the year, nearly 10 degrees below average uh, as we went through the afternoon today. We saw a few little pop up sprinkles within the last hour or so. They're drifting southwest, not really much to these this evening uh, as we take a live look at Southern Pine Ledger radar. And you can see cloudy sky still hanging across the Pine Belt right now. We'll take a live look. 75 degrees out there at the campus of USM with our Mississippi Power Sky Cam. Temperatures around the area are still sitting into the 70s at the moment. 75 in Hub City, 73 in Petal, and 71 in So So. But as Kerry said, it's going to get warm. We'll talk more about it in my full forecast in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Patrick. Well, the lower temperatures were just in time for Southern Miss baseball. And the game today was a big one for the Golden Eagles. Our sports director, Taylor Curette, is live in Montgomery tonight with the latest on the Golden Eagles game today. Taylor.
Southern Miss picks up right where it left off during the regular season. They opened the Sun Belt Conference Tournament with a 7-1 win over James Madison. And like he's done all season, Tanner Hall absolutely setting the tone. He goes a complete game. Nine innings, nine strikeouts, one unearned run, and he lifts Southern Miss over the Dukes. They stay in that winner's bracket, so the Golden Eagles advance to tomorrow. They're going to face Troy at 4 o'clock. We're going to recap the game. We'll have highlights. We'll hear from Coach Barry. We'll hear from Tanner Hall coming up a little bit later in our show. So stick with us here from Montgomery. Got you covered for the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. For now, I'm Taylor Curette reporting. Guys, I'll send it back to you in the studio. All right. Thanks, Taylor. Well, there won't be any Republican versus Democratic matchups until November's general election. But that time frame isn't keeping the governor's race from heating up early. Stacey Abrams was asked on M MSNBC this week what southern states she thinks are ripe for the kind of transformation they had in Georgia. She referenced Mississippi and the governor's race here that has Republicans pushing back and Democrats agreeing. Well, it's Stacey Abrams, a failed candidate in Georgia who had $113 million given to her campaign and she didn't have enough money to pay all her bills. So she somehow thinks she should have an opinion about the Mississippi governor's race. And she says, Brandon Presley may well can win. And um, I think Brandon Presley is going to end up being a, a failed candidate. And We've seen where their policies leave us. They, no Medicaid expansion not willing to invest in basic infrastructure, not willing to invest in our public schools, not willing to invest in the people of the state. Um, and instead, we have a culture of corruption. Um, and I think people around the state are getting wise to that and are, are interested in a change. So look, Stacy is not saying anything that a bunch of people in Mississippi haven't been saying for a long time. Meanwhile, Tate Reeves has made a major TV ad buy, totaling $1.3 million. His campaign noting it's the same amount. Brandon Presley's cash on hand. Presley's campaign is pushing back, asking why clips shot in 2019 inside Nancy News now closed school would be used after since she's pled guilty in the TANF scandal. One nonprofit is raising funds to create a memorial mural park dedicated to a longtime laurel artist. Our Cam Benelli tells us more. Artist and muralist Mandy Buchanan is well known throughout Laurel because the impact she made on the community. Mandy was known all over this community because she touched so many different uh, geographic areas and so many different cultural area. She was a teacher in the school system. She was a volunteer at the museum. She's a life member of the Arts League and, and a big part of our day in the park. Now, Glory House co-founder Grant Staples is raising funds to honor her memory with a memorial mural park. This was something she would have been all over. And so after she passed, I could not think of a better way to honor her memory and her legacy. The park will feature five murals in front of the Glory House's yard that will serve as a park open to the public. So it looks like we're looking, like I said, 15 to 20,000 to get it completely finished, and that'll even be with, with enough uh, money to do all five in the beginning. Staples says artists like Mark Brown will help paint the murals. If you knew Mandy, you love Mandy. She had a way of making you feel special, no matter who, the, who you were. And I feel like I can speak for most people that knew her that she made them feel special too. She made you feel unique and an individual, um, a very warm person. Brown says this park will be great for the area. Mandy's heart was in, in the community working with people, working with kids, and so I, I think it's a wonderful tribute to her. In Jones County, Cam Benelli, WGM7, on your side. To learn more about the fundraiser, visit the Glory House's Facebook page or its website at thegloryhouse.org. All right, still ahead, kids will have a new playground in Midtown Hattiesburg. We'll tell you how it will be inclusive for everyone after the break. And it was a cloudy day for much of the Pine Belt, but we're going to see a few breaks in the clouds this evening at our Sky Camp in Waynesboro. Now, what can we expect for the rest of the week? Will it stay cool like this? Well, I got the answers coming up. This Memorial Day, WDAM 7 would like to pause for a salute to fallen heroes.